Hey guys, Logan from Knights of Horror here, your collector of the channel. Today, we're gonna take a look back on the 2014 out of print Halloween collection, Halloween collector's box set, man. This is probably uh, my most cherished item on this massive movie shelf. And uh, for one, because I'm a huge Halloween nerd, um, and two, uh, a buddy of mine got this for me for my birthday in 2018. The, I, I, the look on my face when I opened it and I saw this, I was just in awe. And at the time it was out of print, but as we, you know, two years have gone by now, it's just skyrocketed way up in value. So I'm just so thankful that this is in my possession. So today we're just gonna kinda look back at this release. It came out in 2014. We're just gonna kinda dive into uh, this box set. So here we go. So of course you got the original, my favorite film of all time. Not just favorite horror film, favorite film of all time, uh, John Carpenter's Halloween. Uh, what's special about this release is you get two cuts in this box here. Um, well, actually, I'm sorry, you get two transfers. Uh, you, you get the Anchor Bay transfer, which comes with its own little special features. I like the transfer on the Anchor Bay, I think a little more than the other one that it comes with, and that's the 35th anniversary transfer, uh, but that one comes with more features. Uh, so it's super cool, we'll open it up here. And you got both discs. And <laughs> what you see right here is I forgot what's in there. You know what this is? This is a leaf taken off of the hedge uh, in uh, South Pasadena. Yeah, I'm that kind of, I'm, I'm that kind of nerd. Um, I took a freaking leaf off of the hedge uh, because I love the movie so much. And uh, I didn't feel guilty about it because I had watched I've watched several documentaries and like filming locations and the guy who owns the house uh, that the hedge is on his property, he loves it when fans come up and like fanboy uh, about the hedge. He loves it and I'm one of those fanboys. Uh, if, if you knock on his door at a decent time, and I don't, I, don't, I don't entice this, but I have heard that if you knock on his door um, and you ask him like if you could take a branch, like he'll usually be more than uh, giving and say, yeah, go for it. <laughs> Um, not saying go and do that, but I'm just saying there's been history of kids going to do that, and he's super cool. So I didn't feel I didn't feel bad for taking a leaf off of his hedge. There's thousands of more, but anyways, we're gonna go next into the box set with my uh, favorite, probably horror sequel ever, Halloween 2. I I almost like Halloween 2 as much as I like Halloween 1. Uh, yes, it posed a lot of, you know, you could say it posed a lot of problems that l carried on into the, into the franchise. Like in this one, they, of course, talk about how uh, Lori is uh, Michael's sister, which of course has been erased uh, with the 2018 film. Um, I really love this one, though. The ambiance, the film score. Uh, you got Rick Rosenthal, who directs this one, which... Uh, I find funny because I didn't know this as of recently, but Rick Rosenthal, who directed, I think, the best sequel in the series, also directed the worst sequel in the series, and that is, uh, well, that is Halloween Resurrection, and um, which we'll get to my ranking at the end of the video. It, I don't think Resurrection is the worst in, in the series. I know uh, most people do. It's at the bottom of the barrel for me, but um, I just think it's funny that he can make this amazing movie and then just make a pile of shit like that. But anyways, I'm sorry. Let's 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 dive into this one real quick. You can actually buy this version of the movie solo uh, on on the Shot Factory website. Um, so this one is not hard to get. Getting this you know case and these cool discs, this version of it, you know, is a one of a kind in the box set. But you could still find this you know release on the Shot Factory website. But anyways, what's special about this, you've got, a, you've got a ton of commentaries and you actually get the TV version of this film too that's included. Um, TV version has some extra scenes in it which are kind of cool. Um, definitely worth it if you are a fan of the movie. And next we're going to go do a very controversial film that I will defend until the day I die. I will be on my deathbed defending this movie and that is Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Um, I, I love this movie, man. I love it for so many reasons. When I was little, I hated it because I was expecting Michael Myers just like everybody else was. But as an adult, I've gone back and I've rewatched it. And you know what? It's a good, it's a good movie, man. And it's better than a lot of the ones that have followed it. I mean, you got Tom Atkins, who's a class actor. You know, he's in Creep Show, The Fog, Night of the Creeps. Amazing, amazing cult movie actor. John Carpenter, uh, I believe, produced it, and he also uh, did the film score. And I think it's one of John's best film scores if you love his music. Uh, it just got a cool, creepy vibe, man. I mean, about a freaking mask company that's planning on killing all the children in the world on Halloween night because of a commercial. It's pretty dark, man. I, I love that movie. It just gets a bad rap. 
But uh, Halloween 3, you know, I mean, the idea of the Halloween franchise was supposed to be um, an anthology series. It was supposed to be a different story set on Halloween night every movie. But Michael Myers was, you know, he was too big of a character and people just wanted more of him, understandably. But anyways, uh, I would recommend going back and watching it, man. So anyways, yeah, this is another release you can actually buy solo off of the Shot Factory website. Two and three you can buy solo. Um, and actually, if I'm not mistaken, the solo release comes with one more special feature that this box release doesn't have. And it's a commentary by Tom Atkins, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yep, yep, it's, uh, it's not on the back of this. Yeah, so the solo release has a, a commentary by Tom Atkins. But, you know, if you're that kind of nerd like I am, you might want to pick it up. And surprisingly, I don't own it. And I'm still kicking myself. I, I, need, I need to jump on that. But um, anyways, you got commentary on here. You got making ofs. You got a Horror's Hello Ground episode. You know, going Horror's Hello Ground, if you don't know, uh, Sean Clark hosts it. Uh, you're going back to the filming locations of these movies and just seeing what they look like now. But uh, anyways, great movie. I will continue on here. And then we're going to go Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Uh, this movie was pretty big when it came out. I was not born yet, but I've heard of it. It had massive success. Um, you know, at this point, John Carpenter was checked out, uh, way checked out. And I believe Mustafa Akkad, rest in peace, uh, he helmed this one. And uh, you know, he pretty much helmed the he helmed the franchise after you know John Carpenter disassociated himself with it. Um, you got Daniel Harris, man. Uh, it's it's a fun movie. It's not. It's not a perfect movie. There's a lot of flaws. It's, in my opinion, it has one of the worst masks in the franchise. And it's really deceiving when you see the cover of it because you got the OG mask here, but that's not what you're getting into when you watch the movie. But there are worse masks, and we'll, we'll, we'll get on to that a little later. But anyways, uh, in this movie, uh, you got audio, uh, in this edition, you got audio commentary uh, with several of the cast and crew, theatrical trailer, and as far as special features goes, and we're going to get more in-depth at the end of this box set but one of the main reasons to own this box set is because you you don't get the making of in this case here you don't get the making of and I believe you can actually buy this separately but the reason to own the box set is because like I said we'll get into it a little later but in the bonus disc that's only included in the box set you get the um, you get the making of Halloween 4 and 5 so it's one of the many reasons to own this box set because you can only see that if you have this disc. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little more at the end. But let's, let's continue on going down the list of movies here in the box set. Halloween 5. Uh, this is a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, Halloween 4 and 5 are guilty pleasures of mine. They're not perfect movies, but they're entertaining to me. I, I, I watched them when I was a kid uh, on AMC channel uh, for the first time. Uh, they're, they're, they're just fun, man. But uh, Halloween 5, you know, carrying on uh, where part 4 left off. But uh, here, we'll open it up here. I'll show you a little bit of the inside there. Pretty cool. I do wish, though, and I, I, I do wish that the cases were a little better instead of, like, the, the recycled cases. Um, I know the new Friday the 13th set is going to get some, you know, all-around hard cases. I, I forgot what they're called. Um, I might be mistaken. They might not be. I'm not sure. Um, at least that's what it looked like. I could be wrong, but we will find out when I uh, unbox that. So you'll either see me really happy or really disappointed. So stay tuned for that. Um, carrying on. Oh, also, yeah, I think I said Halloween 5 is also in that bonus disc. So you don't get too many special features on that. You got to get the bonus disc if you want to see the making of. Okay, Halloween 6. Uh, not my favorite in the franchise, but not my least favorite. Uh, Curse of Michael Myers. You, you, this in, this has got Paul Rudd in it, so I feel like that's kind of why I like it. It's got Paul Rudd. It's got Paul Rudd and Donald Pleasance in a movie together. I mean, it's so wacky and out there. I just I don't know. It's fun. Um, it's got a cool ambiance to it. I'll give it that. It's just it's not my cup of tea. But this release is pretty special because I believe that this release was the first time that the producer's cut got put on the Blu-ray. And if you don't know the story about the producer's cut. It was really hard to find. Uh, the, this movie has all kinds of controversy. I recommend looking it up if you're interested. But when it came out in, uh, in the theaters, uh, was it 1996 or 95, somewhere in the mid-90s, mid um, 
the the studio the the director said that the, that the studio like took over this movie and ruined the movie so um then they put out the other cut of the film that was on a bootleg and now this in 2014 it was the first time you could actually get a legit copy of the producer's cut so this comes with the with the producers and the theatrical cut um but this one's pretty loaded with features you got new audio commentaries by the cast and crew you've got all kinds of uh, you've got all kinds of uh, interviews on it and uh, behind the scene footage stuff, uh, alternate endings and deleted scenes. It's loaded. So if you like Halloween 6, man, uh, I recommend hunting down this box set. But carrying on, we're going to go to Halloween 20 years later, or as some, including myself, call it Halloween H2O. Um, I, I like H2O. It feels like Scream. It feels like uh, if if Ghostface put on a, a, a Myers mask, this is what it would be, and I believe the the filming location used in this was in Scream 2. Um, it, it, it's a fun movie. It's not perfect, but it's a lot of fun. But uh, anyways, um, lots of uh, lots of interesting special features on here. You get new commentaries with, uh, with the director and Jamie Lee Curtis, which is pretty cool. Um, and then uh, here's the inside of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually um, it's not it's not my favorite of the franchise, but it's actually um, it's kind of in the middle there. Uh, there are definitely worse sequels. All right, and where are we going? We're gonna go. <laughs> all right, we're gonna go here to the bottom of the barrel. It's all uh, uh, some guilty pleasures and some and just some not so pleasurable movies at all. Um, okay, we're gonna go down the list here, and we're gonna go to uh, Halloween Resurrection following H2O. Killed the ending of H2O. Uh, there's not much redeeming quality of uh, redeeming qualities of this movie. Um, I mean, you got you have Buster Rhymes in it, which is hilarious. If you want to see him do a karate match against Michael Myers, I, I would recommend it, but I don't know why you'd want to see that. Uh, it was, like I said, it was directed by the Halloween 2 director, Rick Rosenthal, so I don't know how he did that and then did this. Like, I don't think he can even defend this movie. Um, I remember watching it as a kid, and I was younger, and I wasn't so critical, and I, I enjoyed it, but I remember watching it again as an adult, and it's just a pile of crap, in my opinion. Uh, it's, got Tyra it's got Tyra Banks in it. <laughs> It's just, it's hilarious, man. Tyra Banks, Busta Rhymes. You get Jamie Lee Curtis for like a split second in the beginning. Um, but anyways, if you really like this movie, there are, there is there's some special features for you. Uh, audio commentary by the director, Rick Rosenthal. Uh, alternate endings, deleted scenes, uh, just behind the scenes featurettes, trailers. Here's the inside. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I, I don't think since I've owned this this box set, I don't think I've actually uh, put this one on. But because of you know COVID and whatnot, and not there's not too much to do this Halloween season. There's some stuff that's popping up, but uh, my girlfriend and I decided even the bad ones. We're just gonna watch all the Halloween movies in order. So that includes the bad ones. But carrying on, uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. Um, I've got a love hate with this one. I won't get too much into this until I do my ranking at the end of this video, but um, I'll just kind of show you uh, the outside. This is the director's cut of the film, and I actually like um, the theatrical cut a little better than the director's cut of this one. I think a lot of people do. That's kind of a rarity if you like a theatrical cut more than the director's cut, and there's a couple reasons why, but I'll mention that in my ranking. Uh, but this one comes with the, uh, like I said, unrated director's cut. Uh, you got audio, you got uh, commentary by Rob Zombie. Uh, you get a bunch of deleted scenes, alternate ending. You get some bloopers, which I've seen is just kind of funny. Uh, you, you get a making of featurette. You get to know the cast and crew. Yeah, it's a cool little release, man. But uh, disc one is your movie, and then disc two, I believe, are the special features of the film. I kind of wish that they included this. This doesn't come with the theatrical cut, surprisingly. Um, I wish that it included the theatrical cut. I might need to go buy a... A uh, copy of that on Blu-ray. I don't even know if there's a Blu-ray. I know there's a DVD of the theatrical, but if there's a Blu-ray out there, I'm gonna need to get it. But anyways, uh, that's that. And then uh, moving on to uh, Halloween 2, man. Uh, again, I'll talk about why I don't like this film at all in my ranking. But uh, it's just, uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> uh, Halloween 2, that's all I'm gonna say. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, not to be mistaken with the amazing 1981 Halloween 2. Uh, this release uh, comes with a commentary by Rob Zombie deleted in uh, alternate scenes, uh, some uh, some added footage, some, some bloopers, which I've seen are actually kind of funny in this one. And uh, what's cool about the inside of this is I promised we would get to at the end is uh, we have the bonus disc, which uh, I told you comes with Halloween 4 and 5 making of featurettes. But why I love this disc, and if you're a hardcore Halloween fan, you're going to want to hunt this box down because this disc comes with the TV version of 1978's Halloween, but it, it's not just the TV version. They take the additional scenes that were shot for the TV version and put it in, they splice it into the original film. So it's pretty much an extended version of Halloween 1978 that you can only own if you own this disc. Um, but yeah, then other than that, holy grail right there, um, you've got um, you've got Horror's Hollow Grounds episodes, you know, you got episodes of pretty much all the, mo all or most of the films, you know, going back to the filming locations and seeing what they look like now. Um, just all kinds of really cool stuff in this, man. But uh, yeah, so those are, uh, those are the films in the box set, and it also comes with this cool little booklet here that we'll just kind of glance over. Cool little booklet that was included. You know, you get some, uh, you get some cool behind-the-scenes photos, I believe, in here, and um, just some cool fun facts about the film, and just, you know, the whole story about putting this, this box set together. There's Mr. Ant-Man right there, Paul Rudd. Uh, Halloween Resurrection. Yeah, this is, um, uh, this is a cool little, cool little box, guys. Um, if you can get your hands on one, if you see one on eBay, do not hesitate. Buy it if it's an affordable price. People gouge for this, so I wouldn't recommend like spending a thousand bucks on this. But if you find this for like under four hundred dollars, freaking do it. I know it's a lot of money, but that's the cheapest you're gonna find it. I hate to say it, 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 it is. Uh, but really quick, uh, before I do my ranking, I wanted to. Uh, Show you, well, actually, I couldn't, I couldn't go through that and not talk about Halloween 2018. It's not a part of the box set, but I needed to include it. Um, I, I like this movie a lot, and I'll tell you why in my ranking. But um, um, I, I kind of hate that I have a box set that's not that that's a collection that's not complete anymore. But I do love that we're getting more Halloween movies, so, you know, can't have it all. But uh, this came out just the other day. Actually, I believe it released... Uh, uh, was it the 29th? I got this a day. Uh, I got this a day early from Best Buy. Um, if you can uh, go get your hands on one, I recommend doing so because I think it's limited edition. But it's Halloween 1978 in 4K, so it's totally cool. I'll take it out of this cool little slip cover here. You get a this amazing steel book by Lionsgate, released by Best Buy. I believe it was 20 bucks. That's the inside. What's cool about this too is you're getting two transfers of the movie here. Uh, this is the Anchor Bay transfer. I actually really like the Anchor Bay transfer. It's just the regular Blu-ray. And the 4K is the 35th anniversary uh, transfer put into 4K. So you're getting two transfers of the movie and both have special features on them. So for 20 bucks, man, I mean, it's a steal. It's only gonna go up in price on eBay. So if you want it, act now. But uh, all right, so that's that. Let's just... Uh, Let's get to our ranking, shall we? The uh, moment uh, I know uh, I know Anthony has been waiting for. Okay, so my Halloween ranking here. All right, so it's no uh, it's no secret that my favorite is John Carpenter's Halloween One. Uh, love this movie. I love that it was shot on such a low budget. Um, I, I could probably sit here for two hours telling you how much I love this movie, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, my number two on this list is uh, Halloween 2. Love this movie, like I said, almost as much as the first one. It's probably one of my favorite horror sequels ever. Um, I just love it. I, just, I, I, I love this movie so much, man. Uh, it posed a lot of problems for the future, but yeah, at the time, you don't really care. It's just a good movie, man. And John Carpenter wrote it. Uh, fun fact, if you don't know, uh, John Carpenter, uh, there's a big struggle because he didn't want to make a Halloween sequel. And the studio was pretty much saying, well, we're going to make this with or without you. So do you want a paycheck? So he's like, okay. So I, rem I remember hearing an interview that one night he was really drunk and just didn't know where the story was going. 
And while he was drunk, he wrote in that uh, Lori Strode was the sister of Michael Myers, and that is a uh, that's a regret that he's had ever since. Since they've got to erase that uh, to uh, you know to John's favor, they got to erase that in uh, Halloween 2018. So yeah, Halloween 2 is my number two. Number three. Halloween 3, like I said, I'll defend this freaking movie, man. I love it. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend watching it. Just watch it with an open mind and just treat it treat it as if it was just called Season of the Witch. Not Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Just let it be its own movie. It's good. It's good. I highly recommend watching it. Don't let anybody tell you that it's bad. Decide that for yourself. Okay, number four. We're going to jump to uh, Halloween 2018. Now, when I first saw this movie... Um, when I first saw this, oh, you got my tickets in here. I saw it a few times when it came out. Um, when I first saw this movie, I, I was so hyped that they were going to make the sequel involving John Carpenter, my favorite director, uh, that they were going to bring it back to its roots and do a sequel to my favorite film of all time. Uh, so I was super excited about that. And I think I went into this with just way too high expectations it's a great movie but i remember watching it and the credits rolling and going i feel i feel unsatisfied and like i don't know i don't know what it was because i i, I loved the film score i think that's my favorite element of the film uh i just there were parts of me that felt unsatisfied so the next night i went to go see it again and i liked it a lot better the second time because i i knew what i was getting into uh it, every each time i watched it i liked it a little bit more um, but man, it, it's better than uh, it's better than the rest of the sequels that I'm gonna name off after it. I think it's a great movie and it's a great comeback to the franchise. And I'm really excited for Halloween Kills. And I hate that it's getting pushed back to uh, next year because of COVID. But it is what it is. Uh, I understand the reasoning for it. This it's just gonna sit on a shelf for a whole year, <laughs> just gathering dust until next October. That's okay. It'll be well worth it. Uh, going on here, we're gonna go to. Uh, Number f we're going to go to my number five, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Not a perfect movie by any means, but I do enjoy its ambiance. Um, I, I, I enjoy uh, the performances in this one. It's, it's a ton of fun. Um, just, it's just a fun movie. I, I try not to be too critical about it. It's got some good aspects to it. But um, after that, we're going to jump to uh, Halloween H2O. Um, I like this one, man. It's... It, like I said, it's not a perfect movie, but um, you got Jamie Lee Curtis coming back to the role after 20 years. Actually, no, I'm sorry, not 20 years. Um, uh, Halloween 2, she did in 81. So, you know, you know, almost 20 years. It had been a long time since since she had done a Halloween movie. And it was actually Jamie Lee Curtis's idea uh, to, to do this. She, she pitched it, actually. So, uh, anyways, uh, a lot of people hate it. Um, I like it compared to especially the rest of them. But uh, H2O, man, it, uh, it, it's a fun one. Okay, we're going to go to Halloween 5. It kind of goes downhill for me from here. Like, these are all just kind of just mildly entertaining. Um, Halloween 5 kind of goes off the rails a little bit, you know. Uh, Dr. Loomis in this one is uh, Donald Pleasance's character. Kind of crazy. I think Do Dr. Loomis is, is scarier than Michael Myers in this movie. <laughs> he's, like, trying to sacrifice. He's, like, the whole time he's using uh, Daniel Harris's character, Jamie, as bait. For Michael, and it's it's pretty screwed up, man. Like I, I he's just batshit crazy in this movie. Uh, the mask is god awful. It, it's terrible. He looks like a Michael Myers looks like a bird. Uh, again, the the uh, the the cover is uh, it, it's uh, it's misleading, man. That is not the mask used in the movie. Um, but anyways, it's a weird movie, but I like it. I like the ambiance. I I I have memories of watching this on AMC when I was a kid. Moving on. We are going to go to uh, my number eight in the bunch, and that is Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Man, it's, it's a, with Paul Rudd, it's, it's a weird movie with some kind of cool ambiance, but uh, I think I prefer the, the producer's cut over the theatrical cut, like most do. It's Donald Pleasance's last film, I believe. Uh, not just last Halloween film, but last film in his career, because he passed away. And they had the, the, the ending kind of got messed up in that. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's a weird movie, man. It 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 takes some elements of the character. They ex they explore it into like you know why is Michael evil? Like what happened to him as a kid to make him evil? Um, it's a weird movie, but um, you know it's it's got some entertainment value there. And then moving on to my number nine, um, 
I know a lot of people defend this one, including Anthony. But um, you know what? Every time I watch this movie, it's ha Rob Zombie's Halloween remake. Um, every time I watch this movie, I feel like I dislike it a little more than I did the previous time. And I, I don't discredit Rob Zombie for what he did. I think he added some new elements, but I didn't like. To me, I, I, what was scary about Michael Myers was was not knowing where he came from was just that whole mystique I didn't want to see what was under there you know not that's just a matter of, of metaphor but like I didn't want to see where he came from I just you know you, you knew that he killed his sister and that was it and I kind of liked the you know off screen like you know what could have caused this but Rob Zombie pretty much brings it under the light and says this is what happened to Michael Myers as a kid he was from some white trash family and I just yeah it just I don't know man I liked it when I was younger and I first watched it I think it was because I wasn't allowed to watch it when it came out and so it was kind of cool sneaking and you know watching this one you know bad kid so I, I like that memory of watching it and um, I do like Malcolm McDowell I think he's like the one redeeming quality of this movie I think he was a pretty good casting choice if they were gonna cast another Dr. Loomis but yeah you know what it's not terrible but it's not my favorite in the franchise. And then uh, going down, uh, a lot of people put these last two as their bottom, and a lot of people, um, they're right. Um, Resurrection Man, this is most people's bottom of the barrel, but this next one I think I dislike a little more than this one. Resurrection, it's like an MTV Cribs Halloween movie, and who the hell thought that that was a great idea? Um, it's got one of the worst Michael Myers in it in my opinion. Um, the mask is bad, not as bad as some of the other masks, but it's bad. It's it's bad. Um, like I said earlier in the video, there's a fight between Buster Rhymes and Michael Myers. It's, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's move on. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Um, bottom of the barrel for me, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Uh, oh, you have to be on a lot of drugs to like this one. Um, <laughs> and I don't in I don't endorse drugs. So uh, this this movie, man, I don't know. I, I I know Rob was trying to go into his own direction. You know, in the beginning of the film, it takes place in the hospital, like 1981's Halloween 2. And then I believe in the movie spoiler alert, uh, it was a dream. It didn't happen. And then he kind of goes off into some weird tangent about you know Michael seeing his mother in uh, in a white horse and and the recasted version of his uh, younger self and it's just a weird movie and Laurie Strode in this movie is just yelling fuck you to everybody. Uh, it's a weird movie and then Dr. Loomis is making profit off, Dr. Loomis is completely unlikable, uh, Malcolm McDowell's per portrayal, or not his portrayal but just the direction that was written for his character, uh, just making money off of you know Michael and something that it's something that Dr. Loomis's character I think wouldn't do. Just not likable at all. It was kind of a dick through the whole movie. There was not I don't think there's one likable character in most of this movie other than uh uh Sheriff Lee Brackett. Uh who's the guy that plays him in uh in that uh the guy who plays Chucky. Oh my god. I am drawing I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> but uh, uh, anyways, um, I, I'm gonna kick myself after I'm done filming this because I know his name is Brain Fart. But anyways, he was like the one guy in this movie that I liked. I thought he did an okay job with what he was given. Um, yeah, it's Smiley's favorite. I think I've seen this twice. And uh, I, I, the second time I was like, maybe I'll like it more the second time. I hated it more the second time. But anyways, guys, uh, that's my uh, that's my Halloween ranking. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, be sure to uh, like and subscribe if you already have not. Um, and then next video, I believe we're gonna dive into more of my film collection. So stay tuned for that. You guys carry on. Uh, stay safe out there. Have a happy Halloween.